As soon as you walk in, nothing can really prepare you for the adventure you're about to embark on. Challenge yourself. Discover what life has to offer. Experience the difference of doing your degree at Bishop Burton College. It's classrooms without walls. It's hands-on. Getting out and mucking in. Learn without limits. Open days are happening now. Visit bishopburton.ac.uk. Hi, uh, good morning. Uh, welcome along to the Bishop Burton virtual open event. Um, <clears throat> just a bit of housekeeping before we start. Um, the event will be recorded, so I'm recording this presentation at the moment. So if you can please make sure your microphones are switched off or, um, or on mute, and also keep your cameras switched off as well. If you do have any questions as we're going along, if you want to drop them into the chat box, uh, I'll be able to respond to these uh, at the end of the session as we go uh, to the end of the the kind of formal presentation. Okay, so like I said, good morning. My name is David Whitelock. Um, I am the uh, HE or the Higher Education Academic Lead for non-land-based programmes within the University Centre of Bishop Burton. And within that remit fits uh, the HNC provision within business, uh, health and social care, and uh, the international uh, travel and tourism management. Okay, just to sort of give a bit of background really in terms of where we, uh, where this programme sits uh, in the spectrum of higher education or university level courses. Um, so there's kind of three pathways really. So on the right side of the screen, you've got the, the traditional degree pathway route. Okay, so most of you now becoming your, will be studying your level three provision. And following that, you'll move on to the, the HNC degree pathway, which is level four. Uh, is the first year, level five being the second year, level six being that final and third year of a degree pathway, which you can see on the right hand side of the screen. Okay, there are other two routes, or there are two more common routes within higher education, and that includes the foundation degree, which is the first two years of a degree level, which at least allows an exit or a point to leave to go into industry at the end of the second year with a foundation degree. <clears throat> and then we have the HNC, which is the, the kind of program we're going to be discussing mainly today which is a standalone level four qualification. So it's the first year of a degree. It's the same level as, like I said, the degree or foundation pathways. It's just a, a one year uh, course that allows students to experience higher education. Uh, and then if they like, or if they're already in industry, step up, upskill, and then leave again to go into industry following that one year. Again, on completion of the HNC, you can go on to HND, which is the higher national Diploma, which is the second year or level five study of a degree slash foundation degree. Um, you have the option then also to progress on to a foundation degree or an FDA or an FDSC um, within other institutions. And following that, then you can top up onto a BA or a BSc, uh, the level six, the final year of a degree. Okay, the key thing here really is that these, these three pathways, irrelevant of which pathway you choose to study on, all lead to the same endpoint. OK, but the benefit of the HNC, HND and then final top up route is it allows a more broken, uh, well, not broken as such, but a more uh, stepped approach to study. OK, it allows you to, to dip into study, maybe do the HNC, you might go into industry for a little bit, you might come back to do a HND, back into industry before you finally top up. OK, and it allows that step off rather than being signed into a three year degree programme where you have to go all the way through to, to get to the final stage. Okay, so again, here, the key thing we have just to kind of make you aware of is this is not, there isn't a best route and irrelevant of which route you take to get to that BA level or to that, that degree level, if that's where you're aiming to achieve, um, you still would walk out after them three years with a, with a degree certificate. So you wouldn't tell anybody at all, you wouldn't identify you've come from a different route, okay? And sometimes it's more beneficial to, to kind of take this stepped approach, especially with the trials and tribulations that come with study and, and, and life in general. Okay, so our entry requirements for the programme. So for HNCs here at the University of Bishop Burton, we're looking for 48 UCAS points and on the screen. You can see so uh, extended diploma, that's PPP, at dip stage, that's just an MP and or MM at the 90 credit. Um, we do require that you have GCSE uh, English language at grade C or four or an equivalent if uh, you're a in potential international student. 
An application for these programs is through the UCAS uh, website. We also do look and, and we do want to look at and, and get uh, details from an appropriate academic reference. Again, for some students who may be mature, that's somebody who can comment on your ability to study or, or work potentially uh, within like an academic uh, remit. For those students who are coming from a non-traditional entry route, what I mean by that is you're not coming straight from level three into uh, level four study, we do have options as well to support that progression into education. Okay, so you may not study for a number of years, we can support that tra uh, transition into HE study uh, and assess your, your skills through um, entry assessments, for example, which is gives us a, a good snapshot of your skill set on entry. But again, the HE and C programme is developed and designed to support students uh, step into level four into higher level study. Okay, so that's sort of about just the general overview of the programs. I'm gonna come through and talk a bit more specifically about each individual program, but what's the typical week at the university and look like for a student uh, within Bishop Burton? Well, much like any other institution in the country that delivers higher education, teaching will take place within lectures, uh, seminars, discussion and debates around research tasks are going away potentially in groups individually to come up with a solution, problem solving, and then feeding back to the group. Maybe some group work or some group projects, working on case studies. Okay, so a, a, a mix of approaches to our teaching. Again, when we, when we talk about lectures as such, they're not always, they're not a, a traditional lecture that you'd expect with a, a, a member of staff stood at the front and just talking to you. Them sessions also include these discussions and debates. They include research tasks. They include an interaction with the students. Okay, so our delivery style is very student-centered and it's all about getting you engaged with our teaching approach and your own learning, which is a fundamental step and the, the biggest challenge for students stepping into level four is developing that independence of study. The semester or the, the academic year for, for higher education is split into to two 14-week semesters. Okay, so the first semester runs from typically the end of September through to, to mid end of January. Okay, so we're now coming into the final couple of weeks of our current first semester. And then the second semester runs from the end of Jan mid to end January through to middle of end of May, okay, depending on when the academic year like, term starts. Okay, so it's split into two 40 week semesters and you'll be on campus or you'll be required to be engaged in sessions uh, three to four days uh, a week. Okay, so you'd be in university between three and four days, depending on timetables. And that equates to about 17 hours of contact. Okay, so that's spread across those three, four days a week. Um, and again, the key thing here really is depending on the, your mode of study. So again, these courses are available part-time and full-time. That for a full-time student, there is sort of a minimum requirement, if you like, that you're looking at 30 hours of study per week. Okay, so you have be in contact for, for, for 17 hours approximately, but then there's an, an additional requirement that to be successful or to achieve a, a higher level that you are putting in a minimum of 30 hours a week of study, which is including that 17, so another 23 hours, 13 hours. Okay, so why are you going to send a Bishop Burton? As you might guess, probably not mathematics because that wasn't my greatest uh, bit of mental arithmetic a moment ago. But why the university centre? Okay, well, like I just mentioned a moment ago about how we tackle each week and how we teach, okay, our delivery style is very, very uh, kind of personal. We work in, in much smaller groups. Our majority of our sessions are in smaller um, classrooms and smaller lectures and seminars. We are engaged in that learning process. You can kind of see that image in the top corner sort of depicts that the member of staff is within the group. They're asking questions there engaging students to, to take part in the session. We'll set tasks and research questions and research uh, of case studies and coming back with solutions to share ideas and feedback. Okay, as opposed to maybe the more traditional and some uh, still prevalent in a number of institutions, this sort of lecture format with uh, hundreds of students sat in a theatre listening to a member of staff or a lecturer or a professional in the front talking about the content. That approach is really beneficial in the fact that actually it makes you active in that learning process. Okay, while you're in the classroom, we're able to develop a range of skills that will set you in good stead for further study, but also for employment. Okay, we're giving you the, the skills and the impetus to, to research, to find information, to make judgment on that information, to feed that information back in appropriate mechanisms and, uh, and to discuss, debate, engage with other students and your peers in relation to what they've found. 
Okay, we operate an open door policy. Okay, I'm a member of the staff at the college. We are uh, primarily focused, our main aim is the student. We work actively to ensure that you are successful and achieve on your program of study. Okay, so dropping, making contact with your tutors via email. Uh, there's regular contact through ADS, so that's an academic development seminar, which is a, an hour a week on the timetable where the students can be maybe within a group session, we might do something that's around academic skills, or there's always time for a, a tutorial within that time slot as well. Regular tutorials, regular support. In addition to that, we have our range of, of support mechanisms within the college that support students in both academic study, but also their health and welfare. All right, so very much uh, we, we get to know the students, which kind of brings us on to this, this bottom point, really. If you're a student in that top left image in the lecture theatre, it is impossible for that member of staff, and that's me speaking from experience, to know those students. I can't remember every name and everybody's intentions and aspirations and experiences in that, in that setting. However, with the groups we deliver to, we get to know our students as programme leaders, managing the, the courses we get to know each student by name by experience what they like and don't like what their potential career aspirations are and we get to know habits as well so if a student suddenly drops off in attendance and they're normally a good attender then that can start to bring the sort of alarm bells if you like of what's going wrong what's happening can we look to support again these professional relationships we develop our students allow us to allow students to open up and, and discuss a number of issues they have around life and then allow us to support them through that process through difficult periods you know, studying is a difficult process again it, it requires high levels of motivation and again that's why it's really important that from our perspective that the program leaders get to know our students so really what why university and a bishop burn i think our really key selling point is that we are heavily student focused uh, and our lecturers and our, our program leaders focus on the student and get to know them and again that's through our teaching for our individual support and by the fact that we actually get to know you as a student. Okay, then, so if we move on to some of the programs and we're, we're kind of here to give some information about. The first one I'm gonna give you a, a brief overview to is the HNC uh, Healthcare Practice Integrated Health and Social Care Program. Okay, so this program is, is uh, developed to develop a student's broad awareness, understanding uh, and uh, knowledge, if you like, around the healthcare sector, all right? Focus around developing the skills for entry, entry, for entry, sorry, or progression through the healthcare sector. Okay, it might be that you're already working in the healthcare sector, you want to upskill to move into sort of senior levels or um, supervisory or, or management levels, okay? Again, this might be that you're moving straight from level three into level four study and it allows this program for continued higher level study onto level five and, and final degree study, okay? Like I say, it's a one-year program. If you do come part-time, then these modules you'd be you'd be uh, taught on an infill basis with the with the program, and you study half of these programs each year. Okay, one-year program, and these are the modules that are split across that fourteen-week semester. <clears throat> so, I'll give a bit of information about some of the programs, and give you a bit of insight if you like into uh, the program. You can see from the range of modules that are taught that it's very much about developing that broad awareness of the sector. Okay, so if you look at the support and individual journey through integrated health and social care. That modules around developing understanding of individuals like right to be involved in their own care which is looking at that journey through the health and social care sector all right the process of that module will be to develop your understanding of the, the legal requirements but also some of the theoretical and conceptual uh, frameworks that look to support that individual in that in that journey um, and hopefully through that module as well, you'll develop the confidence to promote that in practice, to be engaged in your uh, customers, clients, other people in your care, to be engaged in that uh, management and guidance of their own care. Again, there's a number of other things in there that are kind of fundamental to the sector, obviously around our evidence-based practice that we're looking at developing our skill set that everything we do is based on the academic and research evidence that's out there. And looking at effective reporting and record keeping a fundamental skill within this sector that we need to be able to keep effective and accurate records look at the addressing inequalities module really contemporary really evolving uh, module in that it looks to address explore and develop students knowledge within current public health issues all right and the factors that influence the differences in the health status across the population 
Right? This includes different types and levels of, uh, of interventions that we can put in place to support uh, health or, or social aspects. That can include like, health uh, protection and prevention and the reduction of disease and looking at also the prevention and control of disease spread. Okay, so a really sort of uh, broad spanning program that develops that understanding at level four stage. Again, it's a quite a key theme as we go through the HNCs of that. And again, a very key theme of level four study in any degree program is that it starts to get that base broad awareness of that subject area. Okay, so onto the HNC business. Okay, so um, very much like the HNC uh, in health and social care. The key thing here again is around about getting that broad understanding of the business sector. Again, it's about kind of give you the skills to continue your studies or to upskill yourself if you're currently already in industry or looking to enter this industry or the range of, of, of aspects within the business sector. All right. Modules again are in a HNC program are around academic and applied employable uh, applicability skills, developing both that applied aspect but also the underpinning knowledge. You study a range of modules. Okay, through marketing essentials, human resource management, management and operations, accounting, you can kind of see that this actually covers the broad spectrum of business, uh, including the sort of business law and even through to small business management. So we have our students who uh, have interest and come along for developing their skills and running their own small startups. Okay, so if you look, for example, I'll give you a bit more detail around some of the modules where you, you matched or you will study in this program. So for marketing essentials, what you'd expect introduces the basic or the start principles of marketing, all right, enabling you to develop a, a basic marketing plan to employ key elements of the marketing mix uh, and understand the theory and application of, of, of marketing and the essentials of being able to market a, a company, business, small startup. Uh, and underpinning that theoretical basis uh, with real world examples. Okay, so we'll look at businesses that range from um, large international organizations through to small business. Okay, so you might consider Google or Apple and how they market through to more localized small business sector. Again, I'd like to talk about the entrepreneurship and small business management uh, module because again, that's a really key thing in regards to working with business. And a number of students that we've come across and, and, and supported has, has, has looked to go on to small business startup. All right. And this module gives that nice grounding in entrepreneurship, helps you to understand it, to define it, and its scope in terms of what is what is the scope of entrepreneurship. So what we mean by that is looking at how national cultures and the national economy might influence into entrepreneurship and small business startup, but also the role of small business in sort of the national economy. Again, it also goes through small business management. It looks at and uh, factors around enabling, but also some of the potential barriers that might uh, restrict or limit small business startup. So a really comprehensive module around supporting students who might be interested in uh, yeah, small business management or entrepreneurship. Okay, and finally, the third part I'm gonna kind of introduce you to and talk about is the HNC International uh, Travel and Tourism Management Programme. Okay. A little bit repetitive about what I've gone for the last two modules, but again, it's looking at that broad spectrum, that broad spanning knowledge, understanding of a variety of concepts and aspects that underpin that transition from sort of level three into, into travel and tourism management that's going to allow you to pick up some of those higher level jobs within the sector. Okay. So if we look at some of the modules we've got along the way here, so the contemporary travel and tourism industry, Okay, this looks to develop your understanding and the structure and the systems within the travel and tourism industry. Okay, so it's really important that if you're going to work and manage a team around sort of increasing promoting sales, that you understand how this industry works. Okay, so you'll examine the interactions between like key elements, i.e. accommodation provision, uh, the transportation, the attractions, um, the different tourism, tourism settings and the different experiences that come with those. All right. Again, you look to explore the life cycle of a uh, tourist situation or tourist um, destinations. So how they go through the life cycle, but also the factors that affect tourist behavior as well. So quite a broad spanning but encompassing module that gives you that grounding in where people travel, where they travel to, why they travel, and what are the motivators that, that influence that behavior too. 
Um, again, you've got looking at kind of key modules in there, again, around business, uh, sorry, the business toolkit, travel tourism business toolkit. Um, and again, this is now focused on that transition from just being a member of staff, potentially one of these organizations to be a competent manager within these organizations. All right, so we're looking at key principles of, of sort of management, uh, understanding important principles around uh, performance indicators. Okay, so these could be KPIs within uh, financial, but non-financial uh, aspects too. Okay, so uh, moving through to human resource management, which is also a module, but understanding your role as a manager in that aspect. Um, but also it kind of looks at other factors that might influence the modern business. Okay, so that could be economical, uh, national uh, factors, etc. So really interesting modules in here as well that is kind of fundamental to the sort of uh, service sector really around managing the customer experience, okay, and leadership and management within these industries. So we're looking around supporting the customer, how we engage them, looking at pinch points, looking at sale points, uh, and increasing their experience. Again, we've talked about that sort of broad spanning sector uh, and need to understand that, that base knowledge in the sector. So we look at there's even uh, a module we've included in here around managing confidence and events. Okay, so knowing the number of students, and this is a growing sector, <clears throat> especially within um, tourism slash hospitality, that ability to manage a conference, to manage an event. Okay, and that can be uh, a marketing event potentially within the sector, but it could also be a standalone job where you are fundamentally uh, employed as part of uh, an events team that deliver a range of events, i.e. weddings, etc. Um, again, we could touch on human resource management within the tourism uh, business toolkit. But again, we look at actually understanding principles of human resource management. If you're going to work in management, if you're going to step into this sector, you're going to need to understand how we manage staff and the importance of an effective and useful human resource. OK, so again, a broad spanning uh, program that gives that base knowledge for continued study or progression into industry following that study uh, program. Now it's fundamental and it's an always an age-old playoff and it's a discussion we have on numerous occasions with, with, with parents who come along to these open events with their, with their, with their children and, and prospective students. Okay, and that's around work experience and work placement. Yes, we know that we need to increase our knowledge and we know that to enter sectors we need that education, but we also understand that there's a, a mandatory or there's a key aspect for employers that has that person got the experience. Okay, so just to touch on on the right side of the screen, international travel and tourism management and business, these programs have no mandatory replacement uh, requirement within them. All right, but again, as with all programs at the University of Bishop Burton who, who don't have mandatory replacement, students are actively encouraged to find appropriate work placements during their studies. All right, um, and that's fundamental. That's going to allow you to get entry into some potential sector, uh, maybe get the foot in the door within an organization, but it allows you to start whilst you're studying to apply some of the knowledge that you are developing. It allows you to potentially see firsthand how these theories, these concepts, and the, just the things you discuss within modules uh, are applied within the sector that you choose. The uh, Integrated Health and Social Care Programme, that does have a mandatory uh, work placement requirement, um, and that is uh, you must achieve 225 hours of work placement or work experience. And again, that's... Uh, for that program, reason why it's mandatory is that to be able to work in this sector, you need to be able to have them applied skills to, to work with a range of people in health and social care. Now, you can have this place established when you come to the university and you might already have uh, or be working in the sector and therefore have access to this. Um, or you can come to the university and without a placement and work with our tutors and our staff to establish a link in a placement. Okay. A number of the placement requirements are that there's an element of supervision and developing some supervisory skills. So there will be a discussion that would happen between the tutor, the program leader, and the student and the work placement initially to make sure that they can provide and, and support that uh, mandatory requirements that come as part of the, the placement for this program. Okay, so that sort of wraps up in terms of a brief overview and a bit of information around the provision that we offer. Um, and again, it's really important for us to kind of touch on some of the key additional costs that you will uh, incur. OK, so it's worth exploring the, the website and coming through the World Virtual Open event to discuss with uh, the, the finance team and, and get some advice around finances for higher education study. And um, some of the additional costs that you will have to incur. So, so you have your tuition fees um, and um, 
to pay for through student loans company, Student Finance England, or self-funded. Additional costs include stationery, textbooks, you might want to purchase as part of the program. Um, we look to embed and offer students a, a range of additional qualifications. These are targeted to the experiences and the intentions of students and generally change on, on most years. But again, here with the additional qualifications, we try to keep these costs as minimal as possible. It might be we look to arrange some trips and visits, okay, some uh, educational trips. Again, in, as with the additional calls, we try and where well, we can keep these costs minimal, but just being aware that some of these trips, some of these visits may incur an additional cost. Obviously, getting yourself to and from the campus uh, is an additional cost for yourselves. And obviously, this formal graduation uh, also, and also transport to and from campus, but also to and from your, your placement setting as well. And again, what we're trying to do and the, the key focus for us as staff is, um, if you like, the, the best bit of the year four is, is, is depicted in that picture in the top corner. When we're sat in Beverly Minster and we've got all our students sat in front of us in their cap and gowns ready to graduate, and complete their journey and study with us. Okay, that formal graduation ceremony, the, the, the hire of the, the formal dress does incur an, an additional cost and that's worth being aware of at the start. Just to sort of touch upon during while we're talking about um, additional costs, that the campus and the college and the university centre have a range of financial support that is in place for students to help them through their studies. So again, students generally promoted to go towards and, and apply for their maintenance loans, grants and bursaries through the student finance uh, company to cover their tuition fees and, and, and living costs, etc. If students do hit financial hardship, um, we have a financial hardship fund at the college which, uh, and the university, now, which is to support students in their studies uh, if they do hit financial hardship. In addition, we have an employability bursary, which is just for university students. And that's in place where students can access funding on a yearly basis to develop uh, and achieve additional qualifications towards building their, their CV and successful employment. So again, some of them additional qualifications, you can apply for some uh, financial support uh, from the University Centre to fund them, which again is, has been utilised by a number of students in the past. Okay, so uh, the amount that's given our allocated students can change per year, but again, whatever you're allocated, um, it's generally a couple of hundred pounds a year, uh, you can use on one course or you can take a fraction of that uh, towards a course. Okay, just so we kind of coming towards the end, really, just to sort of wrap up. So why university? And I think as we've gone through, you, you probably kind of pick up on that enthusiasm uh, we have towards our programmes and the focus of our staff in terms of academic and industry experience and, and trying to impart that on our students. Our class sizes are generally quite small or smaller than what you'd expect at a more a mainstream higher education institution. All right, so it allows us to give a more personal and a more supportive experience. It allows your voices to be heard. And I mean that within the learning experience, but also in terms of your general study experience. So if you are in class and you have a question, you're in an environment where you're able to ask it with maybe 20, 30 of the students, or even down to a small number if, if, in some aspects maybe in seminar groups, etc. Okay, so it allows you to ask questions, it allows you to be engaged in that process and allows you to develop uh, those skills that you need for successful study, but also employment. Okay, we have excellent student support and we have excellent teaching. Okay, we are uh, a, a, a well-established university centre with a vast array of experience and a vast array of support mechanisms in place within within the college slash university that's going to allow you to be successful uh, in your studies. And additional learning opportunities that like we've mentioned about we're here, we've got uh, links within industry that we can promote and, and drive you towards to get the experience. And we're going to look to add those additional qualifications in to promote you to, to build that CV. Okay, and just, yeah, so to wrap up, so the University Centre, um, so the National Student Survey, sorry, put my teeth back in, is a student survey that takes place every year and it asks for feedback from our students on our uh, overall uh, performance in terms of their satisfaction. Okay, so 85% of university students at Bishop Burton agreed or strongly agreed that they were satisfied overall with their course. Okay. 87% satisfaction rate for academic support. Okay, so again, both of these are way above the sector average. 
at 85 percent that their student voice or they agreed that their student voice was good that they were heard and they were responded to okay again these numbers are always uh, again above the sector average for for university level study really key sort of feedback for us as tutors to know that our students are happy that our academic support that we do offer is received and again is um, satisfying our students and allowing them to be successful um, and also that they that they feel that they're heard and yeah and just some sort of more specific feedback we get some comments through from the student surveys that small group size is a great strength okay that it allows them to um, engage and get that feedback and ask questions again very similar to that satisfaction score that the one-to-one -one support of a, that's been available to the student allowed them to gain more understanding of the topic to ask questions and, and really drive and stretch their understanding and again that bottom point there that we get to know our students on a professional level as well is that the course and teachers are very professional but also relaxed okay so we're able to have that rapport and develop that relationship with our students which allows for that additional support to be in place um, but allows that transition from maybe level three college study um, or sixth form study in A-levels to the higher level higher education study. These are my contact details. If you do have any questions or queries regarding the programme or you want some further information, feel free to drop me an email and, and contact me and, and I will respond. Again, explore the, the university on the website and there's further information available on there as well. But again, if you've got any questions, please feel free to to contact me. Come on, I'm going to give you a bit of opportunity now to ask some questions. So I'll just open the chat function to see if anything uh, has come through. Okay. So at the moment, we haven't got any chat uh, or any questions coming in. So if you do have any questions, I'm going to drop onto the talk to you now. Um, so please feel free to uh, come through and ask any questions that you might have. Okay, I wish you very, very much the best of luck with your studies for the remainder of the year. And hopefully we look forward to welcoming you to the University Centre uh, from September on your next step of your studies.